so let me remind, start with a reminder of what we covered last time. So we introduced the waves last time. So um, if you have it with you, the waves worksheet. I just, we just got started on the first uh, section and then I think that's all we had the time for. So let me just remind you of uh, what we talked about. So, um, so as I said last time, we want to keep the discussion of waves general because even though we are going to one particular physical example of wave as a way of building up a conceptual image. So we'll you know, go to this in a little bit. Ah. We'll go to this example that you saw uh, last time in a little bit. But we want to state the mathematics that we are going to work out in a way that it's going to be easily applicable to things that are not waves on a uh, string, things that are sound waves, things that are electromagnetic wave, things that uh, you can even imagine right now. We want to uh, describe our mathematics in general terms first so that all these new terms we are introducing will be up. Uh, new terms and concepts that we are introducing will be applicable to those future topics you will see years down the line. So with that in mind, this is what we covered last time. When you talk about waves, there will always be something that we call wave equation. That will be important in um, analysis of what's coming up. And what I'm going to write down is not the only wave equation. When you do quantum mechanics, you will see a different wave equation that's called the Schrodinger equation. But this is the uh, one wave equation we are dealing with. It says that if we have some function of position and time, and remember, we are trying to keep this general, this function can be describing position. In fact, that is the case here. In this case, the function is the height of the beat. So that height of the bit is the function of the position, the, uh, this position, it, you know, which bit are we talking about? It's a function of time. At what moment in time are you looking at? If you're talking about sound waves, you can talk about it in two different ways. You can talk about, um, uh, in terms, um, so in, with the sound waves, it can, this function can be a pressure, um, like, I, I don't know, we haven't quite covered the pressure, <laughs> but, um, if you you know if you know some idea of pressure from chemistry, that's what we are talking about. We can be talking about pressure, or we can be talking about displacement of an air molecule in a sound wave. Um, and if you are talking about electromagnetic waves, this function will be describing something called the electric field and magnetic field that you will see in physics 4B. So, so we are writing down an equation that this function should satisfy if this function is to describe something that is a wave. And the equation says that double derivative with respect to position. Uh, remember this weird symbol is the symbol for partial derivative. It's, uh, it's, it's actually simpler than it appears. It's just saying that we are taking derivative with respect to variable x alone. Everything else is constant. This is equal to 1 over v squared double partial derivative with respect to time. So that's the, this is the wave equation that we wrote down last time. And we talked about the, gen, um, the most general solution, or rather the general traveling solution. Traveling wave solution. Um, so um, one way that could be written was if it, I have function of x and t, and if you are talking about a wave that's traveling from left to right, traveling in the positive direction um, in terms of x, then we should be able to rewrite this in terms of a function of a single variable, where the single variable is combination of x and t this way, x minus vt. Right? Yes. So this is where we ended with the last time. Um, and what I want to spend a fair amount of time is uh, describe a particular category 
of traveling wave. Because, so you know, this general description, it's nice that it's general, because everything we talk about here will be applicable to many different situations. But the downside is that, um, um, well, it's not very concrete, <laughs> it's very abstract. So you can, it's, so when something is very abstract, this is the biggest danger. You hear the words I'm speaking, you thought you understood it, but it turns out you didn't understand a single word. <laughs> That's why you know, I keep telling you to do the homework, because it's only when you are actually working on something concrete that you r realize what you know and what you don't know. So, so I want to look at more specific example. So the more specific example that we will use for the rest of the discussion for the rest of today and probably uh, next week is the traveling, and this is the important part, periodic wave. So, so far up to this point, we have not described anything that's uh, periodic. As in, we could have, so this is the example I was using last time. Um, I could have just done this, you know, shake this in any kind of way I want, some kind of arbitrary shape and the wave describes how this moves across the space, right? And um, it's nice that the expression we are writing down here can handle any arbitrary function. It's nice that it's general, but there's only so much you can do when you're trying to keep things general. So what we are going to do is we are going to sacrifice some of the generality so that we can work out some details. So instead of saying that you know, this can be any kind of function I desire, or you know, even beyond the saying that this can be any kind of pulse that I want, I am going to limit myself to, um, limit ourselves to talking about a very particular kind of wave. 